All right, hey everyone, my name is Ben Kirsten, and welcome to my uh, brief sort of quick overview on a game I've been developing in Unity. So there are zombies, some of them walk slow, some of them run fast. You can shoot these barrels, they'll shoot up into the air. Uh, when you shoot them, you see some blood, they can throw stuff at you after you kill them. Eventually, they'll get back up. Uh, after you kill them so many times, they will eventually die. I believe this zombie will get up again, though. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Yep, she's going to get back up. Okay, all right. Uh, zombies can eat other zombies. Uh, once a zombie dies, they will uh, turn into zombie food. So if a zombie stays dead, other zombies will come around and start feeding on them. As you can see, there's a boat. You can drive a boat around. Uh, you can find these docks. These are the spots that you can get off the boat on and uh, run around and go shoot some more zombies. Uh, if you find yourself inside house, they will hang around for a little while and eventually give up, but uh, they will come back after you. And as you can see, if you shoot one, they'll, uh, they'll all start chasing you. So let's take a look at the zombies a little bit closer. All right, so here is the animator. You can see uh, there's a few layers going on here. Here's a look at the attack layer. They've got four attacks that they can randomly choose from. Uh, let's see what's next here. We've got a damage layer, so various bits of damage. These are kind of upper body damage layers. Um, here's the damage head layer. You can see the zombie was limping right there now, and that's because the zombie is, quote, damaged. After they've been killed so many times, they will eventually become damaged, at, wh at which point they, uh, you know, stop running and they'll start kind of limping after you. And then once they're damaged, it only takes a few more times to kill them and they will uh, stay dead. And uh, as I mentioned before, they will turn into zombie food. All right, so it looks like we're looking at some of the parameters here. Well, these are all the parameters for the uh, animator. Uh, if you don't know Mechanim very well, uh, you can see that the parameters are kind of global to all the layers. I think now we're going to look at uh, this bit uh, in a little bit more depth here, what I call try to find players. So if you're able to run into a house and close the door, the zombie will hang out for a random period of time. And once they give up and go away, that random value gets reset. So the next time that you run into the house, they will hang out for a different period of time. So you can see here, they're going to hang out for around 13 seconds. Uh, he'll hang at the door for a minute and then he'll wander off and try to get as close as he can. Um, but he will eventually give up. Okay, now we're looking at the field of view here. So the area that's colored in blue is the field of view of the zombie. So you've got to get within this blue area for them to see you and chase you. It might be kind of hard to see on this uh, screen grab here, but the player has a flashlight. And you'll see in a minute when I turn the flashlight on that their field of view gets much larger, basically meaning that you're easier to find um, if you've got your flashlight on, which makes sense. Kind of just wanted to show that he won't see you until you get into this blue area. Oh, turned on the flashlight, so now he saw me. So if the zombie's kind of far away, he'll throw these projectiles at you. Right now they're just some white cubes. Eventually it'd be cool to replace that with something a little bit better. And then as they get closer, they'll start doing more of a melee type attack. So as a player, I haven't got the animations in yet, but uh, you can see the player can kind of throw these projectiles. I think that one was a little too far for the zombie to hear. So let's see, there he goes. All right, so he's gonna go kind of investigate it and you can use this as a way to uh, distract the zombies. And each time that they become distracted, uh, they will get distracted for a random period of time. Um, oh wait, no, actually they will get distracted for 20 seconds, I believe. So you can see he was distracted, but he'll still chase after us if he finds us. So again, it's always fun to blow up those barrels and uh, see him flying away. So what's next here? What are we going to look at next? We're going to look at us shooting the zombie. Okay, so surface hits. So this kind of goes hand in hand with the pooling system that I've come up with. So you'll see when I start the game, a game object will get created at the bottom of the hierarchy called pooling manager. 
So everything that I need to pool will, uh, you know, be housed inside of this one game object. And uh, we've got blood, we've got gore, uh, we've got some throwing objects and all of our surface hits and some explosions. So you can see, um, you know, as I hit the ground, I'm triggering these surface hits. They get activated and then deactivated, uh, ready to be used by the pool again. Uh, so here's some stone hits. You can see also with this stone that you get these cool uh, decals and they will kind of gracefully just fade away after a certain period of time. Uh, it's kind of nice. So what's next? I think we're going to look at some uh, default hits. Yep. So here's some default hits. These are just, uh, you know, default. So, uh, and what's nice is I've got a script that will kind of automatically tag everything based off of either the name of the object or the material that it's using. So I didn't have to go through all the objects in the level and tag everything specifically. I just wrote a small script that kind of deals with all the tagging. So, uh, here was the, uh, what is this? The, uh, what do I call this metal? So the nice thing about this, uh, these barrels is that you shoot them once they explode and then after they explode they uh, get their tag assigned to metal so you'll get the proper surface hit i was pretty stoked on the way the doors ended up here so you'll see that the door always opens away from the player so you never have to worry about the door uh, opening into yourself if you get too close so uh, let's see we're gonna walk inside and then you'll see that uh, now that we're on this side of the door, you'll see that it will open away from us still. So this is nice. And you can see uh, there's some scripting going on, but I'm really using the animator here. Um, and the nice thing is that doors can start off open or closed. And um, it works on single doors. It works on double doors. And eventually, I'm going to use the same system for opening up like drawers and uh, cabinets where um, you know you might find some health or bullets or a weapon or something. So I'm just showing here again that the door is always opening away from you. Um, you can also see now we are in sneak mode. So this just opens the doors more slowly. So the idea here that when you open the door normal, it would create a certain amount of noise and a zombie would be more likely to hear you. And if you open it uh, you know, slower in sneak mode, then they probably won't hear you. Now, panic mode is pretty cool in that it will automatically close the door behind you as you run through it. So it's a it's an easy way to get away from the zombies if they're chasing you. Um, and I think that's about it. So thanks everyone for watching. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything more uh, specific or in detail, let me know. But I'm planning on uh, uploading a few of these videos as I make some more progress and see what happens. I'm really stoked to start adding some sounds. That was my original intention here for this game, was to kind of create something that uh, would give me an excuse to do some sound design. So um, I hope you hang with me, and hopefully I'll get these videos uploaded maybe once a week. We'll see. Uh, thanks for watching.